Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone is doing well today. Um, so, it, as everyone has probably seen by now, we did the interview with uh, Sister Zainab. And alhamdulillah, it was a, overall a very beneficial interview. Um, hopefully for people watching it um, who are outside of the cult, they can see, you know, just how folks sign when they're in that transitioning period. Um, and people in the democracy, okay, well, uh, if, if you feel that, hey, listen, Sister Zainab, um, who is not currently in Team Malay, but is still down with Team Malay, uh, as she said several times in this interview. Um, you feel, hey, listen, she represented you all in a bad light, and uh, it's not how you guys uh, sound or uh, behave or act, um, then I would welcome you to come prove it. Uh, you're not going to. You're going to sound probably worse than her. Um, I give her credit for speaking out um, in any aspects that she could. Uh, and, you know, the courage to come and, you know, be the one to, you know, take a stand and speak for what she believes in. That takes courage and guts, so uh, may Allah bless her for that. Um, she was a little misguided on certain things, um, and so I went through, uh, watched it, the interview again, took down some quick notes, um, and just want to hopefully expound upon those things so that if she ever watches this video, um, it'll be shorter than the actual interview that she did herself. Um, she can get a clear understanding about how, uh, where she was wrong at, um, because a lot of things she just kind of pulls her ears to, um, and we mention this all the time. It's hard to randomly get to a point where, like, hey, I I believe the things that I was taught were wrong. I was I was taught falsehood. I was taught misguidance. Um, I want to believe this is true, and I will go on and believe in this for as long as I I need to. All right, so. Um, let's get to the first thing. So she mentions how she was born in Philly, and you know, this is born in Philly with her parents. So her parents are already in the Jamaat, Dr. Wadud, dude, and her mother, Rahim Uh, Jabani said, Listen, you guys have to live on the land, there's no living in the city, so you have to you have to go, um, and you know, live on the land, and you have to be basically be born on the land at this point in time, right? So that's if your parents, you know, really believe in Jalani, then, you know, having your kids be born and raised on the land, near the land, is a very important thing, right? So that's a, how much do you really follow Jalani? The thing is that pe people, right, will swear to follow Jalani to the umpteenth degree, um, but whenever his followings don't benefit them in any way, that's when it's like, hey, well, I'm going to just alleviate these rules here from him because it doesn't suit me, right? Um, so... Not the biggest thing, but you know, just you know, if if you love someone so much and you revere them and follow all the rules, and it kind it kind of seems weird to just not follow them for childbearing. Like, why do you believe them for like, hey, this person can help guide me to the Akhirah if I follow them properly, but they don't know what's best for my kids. Doesn't make sense to me. Um, but you know, teach your own. All right. So next thing is, um, she talked to Mubarak Tabani on the phone one time, right? When she was fourteen, she mentioned she was fourteen years old. Um, talk to Yulani on the phone one time, right? The thing is, for her, this is actually big because a lot of people haven't had the experience. They haven't talked to him on the phone one time. They've never met him in person or talked to him at all. So this is more than probably the good uh, majority of Team Away folks, right? So cool. Um, but this doesn't equate to you knowing him, right? Um, you just, you had a brief conversation. And everything that I know of Yelani, um, being that my mother um, is one of the, like, the people, the leading experts on Mubarak Yelani and the things that he did in his life, um, he would avoid talking on the phone with people that he, he didn't know. Um, and if he did have to talk on the phone to people in the Jamaat that he didn't know or like, he would keep the, the conversation very short to a minimum, say a few words, and try to keep it official. Um, so, you know, cool. Uh, she also gives credit to her her mother. We love to credit to our mother as well. Um, talking about how she learned the the sunnah from her mother. Her mother had her uh, attend classes when she was fourteen as well, and go and learn the the, the sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when she was young, right? And she she gives credit to her mother for that, which is alhamdulillah. Like we love when parents teach their kids the, the religion um, and Islam. Then she mentions about how you know, the, the Jamaat has these these interfaith uh, programs, right? Which is true, right? They have the, the Muslim Christian United Front or whatever the hell it's called. 
and we've seen what goes on at these events. Um, all it is is the Jamaat who are supposed to who are supposed to be Muslims, right? They pander to Christianity as much as they can. Um, they go on rants of how Jesus is God and how the Trinity isn't that bad to follow because like it's kind of true because we believe it to be as well. And Muslims believe this thing about the, the Trinity, but we as Sufis believe otherwise. So I mean. Honestly, it's more so a Christian Muslim interfaith because Christians kind of convert Muslims to uh, Christianity for some reason. No idea how it happens, but um, I don't, I don't know how, but that's what happens in the Jamaat. All right. Um. So she's kicked out of Jamaat. Right. She could get kicked out of Jamaat for liking a post from Fafa. Um. This should be alarming to you, sister. Uh. Maybe it's not. But people have also been kicked out of Jamaat for liking posts supporting Fafa. Right. Um, Fatima Jelani is one of Jelani's kids. So obviously, if you love Jelani, you would naturally love all of his kids. Um, and others have kicked out as well. And Fafa, Team Fafa, right? In theory, it should be Naima, Fafa, Mudasir, and Sultan, right? Sultan is the brother, right? That is the brother. He was supposed to be, he, Sultan Jelani was supposed to be the chosen one. He was supposed to be who, nor, Basically, who Nor Jelani is today, that's who's what I was supposed to be, because he was Sultan. He's was, he was going to be the seventh one, all right? But uh, his father was like, listen, son, you need a, a diet um, and, and some knowledge for you to become the Sultan. And he was like, yeah, Pops, that ain't happening. Um, so, yeah. Then she goes into this whole tirade about how um, you can't treat Ahli Bait that way. Um, it comes to Ahli Bait. Her exact words were, Mind your business when it comes to Ahli Bay. Um, Don't speak on them and don't say anything bad about Ahli Bay. Which is, I mean, listen, you shouldn't say anything bad about anyone. But um, I think people in Vijama, and you go to this as well, sister, is people have this uh, propensity to hold Ahli Bay to this, like, illustrious, um, almost like um, godly status. And it's very weird. Um... Folks kind of make them infallible, and that when because of their love or obedience to Jelani is what I call it, um, they have this view that Ahlubay can do no wrong, and you were you were in the wrong for questioning what Ahlubay is doing. Not the case at all. Um, there have been plenty of people throughout time who were actually Ahlubay, even if Jelani was Ahlubay cool. Um, that doesn't excuse you from the things that you do wrong because you're Ahlubay. Um, it doesn't mean that. Because you're Ahlul Bayt, you are now a better Muslim than me. Especially if you're someone who doesn't practice very well, um, do much of anything at all, um, and go from there. Like, there's a brother, you may not know of him, but his name is Muhammad Qasim. And he also apparently is Ahlul Bayt from, from Pakistan. But he also says he didn't pray. So he's not a better Muslim than you or any other Muslim that prays. It's just not how it works. Um, so... It's just some, some, some things to just know. Um, there's there's members of Ahlul Bayt who are no longer Muslim. This happens all the time. Uh, the folks would convert to Christianity or be just be born. Hey, their family links back to um, Said Fatima. Cool. But that doesn't mean that just because they're Ahlul Bayt, they're just the best Muslims. It's not how it works. Um, so we have to get this, uh, I guess, fallacy just put to rest. Uh, being Ahlul Bayt does not excuse you from sins. It doesn't excuse you from the hellfire. And you are not above reproach from every other Muslim. You could be questioned, all right? So just hope that this gets, this gets uh, um, cleared out. All right, so this is probably the most important thing, all right? So 14 minutes into the video, all right, she, asked, she asked a very important question. And a question she asked, um, it was a question she was kind of concerned about. It seemed like she was very curious. Like, hey, if Shaji was Muslim, all right? So here's a man, all right? Who she claims saw her so much, she loves so much, but she's not sure if he's Muslim, right? Now, why is that? Because the way the inheritance was left up, right? So the inheritance, as we all know, by some way, shape, or form, all of the money went to Umnor. Umnor went in there and took all of the freaking Sonic rings and Mario coins and said, it's all mine. And none of you get any of it, right? So if Marjolani was someone who followed the Quran and Sunnah, was a, a, a good Muslim man, he would have his affairs in order, um, especially as he was like 70, 80 years old or however old he was. And it would have been, okay, I'm getting into my wee hours. The will was set. My sons get this amount. My wives get this amount. 
and my daughter get this amount. Okay, cool. All that would have been handled, right? But somehow, miraculously, uh, all went to Umnor because he didn't follow the Quran and Sunnah. So yes, um, that's a good question. Yes, if he was Muslim, who knows? Um, we do know that he taught beliefs that were outside of what of Islam, and along with that's where he where where he'll end up. We don't know if he died upon these beliefs. Maybe he um, repented from from these beliefs and and came back to Quran and Sunnah. I don't know, but he did plenty of things where if he died upon these beliefs, it would it would very clearly take him out of what of Islam if he died upon these beliefs. Um, because you can't walk around saying that hey. You either fear a law or fear me, right? Um, so I'll, I'll find out. Right? Now listen. Then you mentioned how you don't know Umnor, right? You don't know her at all. You didn't go up with her. But you have this like reverence and respect for her because you mentioned later on that she taught you uh the history of the grandson. I I, I don't remember if, if she said said Hassan or Hussein, but she just said the grandson and how you wrote a song about him because she talked history about it. Uh which is cool. I mean, uh, I don't get a law, but like, is Umnor qualified to teach you about um, the grandsons of Papa Hamza or something? Like, where did she learn from? Because uh, Jelani it makes up history as it goes along. Umnor, Stalin went to school for Islamic studies. Um, where does the chain of where does the chain of, of narration go? Um, all that, right? And then <laughs> one of the more interesting parts of the video, uh, she mentions how. Black people, all right, us, we were in America before slavery. We were the Aborigines, all right? We were indigenous to America before slavery, before we didn't come from Africa. A lot of us were born here. Um, I can assure you that you, uh, the sister, uh, myself, uh, my mother, father, friends, wife, uh, us black folks, all right, <laughs> we were definitely not already here. Um, you can very clearly, if you do any research at all, you can very clearly trace this back to Africa. Um, the people that were here in the in the Americas before, even Native Americans, the Aztecs, the Incans, yes, they were here before time. Um, but us black folks, the black skin folk, we were not here b before slavery, um, colonization, or anything, or none of that. So, um, don't know, don't know what that is. Um, and she uh, is someone who will not cast aspersions on anyone. So if Umnor says, hey, uh, I'm Akhlebeit, because I had a dream where the Prophet Peace Before came to me in my dream, then hey, that's 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 who she wants to believe. And she's not going to hold her hold that against her um, because she believes that she can, <laughs> she believes that she can tell tell who's a truthful and honest person because um, of her upbringing and belief, right? So, uh, she then gets into this whole diatribe about how we need to watch what we say about MG around her because um, she didn't experience anything bad about her, about MG in her time. Right? So because she didn't experience anything weird or not as loud about MG, um, then that means it didn't happen, right? So, for example, right, let's say, listen, I'm thirsty, right, okay? So, I want some water, all right? I'll have some water. I'll drink it. Cool. Now that I've had water, right, and I am no longer thirsty, that means no one has ever been thirsty before and never will be. That's it. It's over now, all right? No, that's not how it works. Um, life is very different than that. You can have your own experience, and that's great, but your experience does not equate to a solution or what happens in the real world. It's not. You can have your... It's, it's cool, yeah. I have my experiences, but what actually happened is a totally different story. Um, so, yeah. Then she gets into uh, how I, Amr, I can't possibly and do not know Mubarak Jelani because I was a child. My mother knows Mubarak Jelani, but I didn't know Mubarak Jelani because I was a kid. So, listen, let me, um, let me uh, explain something here to the people who watch this video. Uh, I can assure you that yes, I was, I was a child, but the sister doesn't seem to know, and maybe people just forget I'm like the TMOA golden child. Let's get this. Let's go ahead and get this right. All right. <laughs> I was <laughs> uh, conceived in Pakistan. All right, okay. My mother was pregnant over there in Pakistan. When I was a baby, I lived in Pakistan with Mubarak Jelani and his family in his house when I was like one, two, two, two years old as a toddler. All right. 
his freaking the kids move over to the Lani Fafa and Sultan Leoster. Them them they had to watch me occasionally when my mother would go outside. I sat on his lap. Like uh I am like the team way golden gentleman. And as far as knowing Bartolani, I would say besides maybe his wives, uh and I would say Jaffer, no one realistically probably knows more about Bartolani than my own mother. Um, so, my chain of narration, my ishtihad, my, uh, my, like, chain goes with Barjilani, my mother, and then me, all right? I have an authentic chain, right? <laughs> it's, it literally has one link from the, the cult leader, Barjilani, to my mother, to me, all right? And then, if it's not that chain, it is with Barjilani. Jaffer and then me, right? And if it's not that, it is Mubarak Jelani from his own mouth and then me. So I do not have a second, third, fourth hand account of someone saying Abu Ji said that you heard from some sister on the land who heard from someone else who heard from someone else who at that point in time it, it's it's now gone and and diluted. I have a direct, direct chain. I have a, a a secondary source for all my accounts. And if not that, I have a first hand account from Mubarak Jelani. That's it. I I don't have stories from someone telling me someone else said. That someone else said, all right? When Bartolani says, you fear Allah or fear me, I've heard that directly from his own mouth. I've heard it on accounts from my father, heard it on accounts from my uncles, heard it on accounts from my aunties, my mother, all right? All my friends. So the things that I know about Bartolani, yes, I was a baby, cool. I, I wasn't born, right, during the time of the Sahaba and the Sira, all right? But I can assure you, I have done extensive research studying the history and learning all I can about this era, all right, and the stories of the Sahaba. All right, so yes, I wasn't there. I wasn't born, but I can do my research and I am a history buff, all right? So yes, I know considerably more about Mubarak Jelani and TMOA than the apt person in Vigimot maybe ever will know or care to know about. And I've done my research. So uh, I do know Mubarak Jelani. Um, you apparently don't. And it was evident during this entire interview that she had no idea who he was um, and what he stood for, what he actually um, mentioned and did and said. Um, and and that, that's fine. Uh, not everyone's going to know everything. It's okay. You don't have to be uh, very knowledgeable. Often what happens, as we've seen with uh, Team Moy and now the, the Muhammad Qasim people, is that we'll end up knowing more about uh, a specific group of people and their beliefs than they will. Um, and that's just what it is. Like, they, there are, are like Shias who don't know that they don't like the Sahabas. Because that's just, that's just what it is. Um, so yeah, I just want to clarify that for everyone. Uh, I know a lot about, about the Jamaat. Uh, I studied the Jamaat. Uh, my parents were, were some of the founding members. I, my mother is my mother. Um, and I have a direct link from things, uh, my mother can tell me that no one else has experience or know about. And besides Jaffer and again, some of his wives. I would say no one knows more about him than my mother does. So let's go ahead and clarify that. Uh, the same way that your mother taught you, my mother taught me as well. And that's it. Uh, so <clears throat> she believes that the Jama'at is a good thing for your soul and your deen, but also doesn't believe that they're the best organization to be a part of. So I was kind of confused there. Like, okay, how, how can you believe this but not that? Um, whatever. Uh, then she also be believed that this interview was more so a favor for Jaffer and I than it was for herself. Um, that she's helping us out in some way by telling us that we don't know Jelani. Um, I don't know how, but you know, if she believes that, then, then cool, right? So, she believes that, uh, for some reason, she believes that Uncle MJ is a liar, right? Because Uncle MJ was telling the truth about Jelani and the accounts of, of the money going overseas and all that stuff like that and the, 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 the assassinations that she didn't experience or know anything about, but she was all about this man, right? Uncle Emily is a liar. She can tell. She can. She can tell when someone is telling a lie or fibbing or not truthful because she's from the streets of Philly. Cool. Uh, but uh, but she doesn't know MJ. She's is not someone that that she would trust personally. But also, she doesn't know MJ. She doesn't know MG, um, and she doesn't know Noor. But she knows Noor. It, it was. It was kind of like she was kind of all over the place, right? Um, and it's like, what was the purpose of this interview? Because she didn't, she wasn't like concrete for any one thing. And she was kind of just like all over like, hey, like, uh, I, 
I'm awkward with Jamaat, but also I don't know anyone with Jamaat, but also I know everyone with Jamaat. So it was like, did, did, like what what purpose did you serve um, for you doing this in reality? Like, what was what was she hoping to gain from this interview? I wonder when I was you know there. Um, so <clears throat> in classic Jamaat fashion, right? This is. 35 minutes into the the um into the interview she mentions similar to uh hussein adams that she knows plenty of Quran and hadith and sunnahs that she and she can tell us about right but like they always do they say this and then never mention one don't quote one don't say any one of the sort to back up their claims they just say hey listen i i i learned the quran and sunnah from tmoa and when you ask them what they learned they're always just something it's, it's, it's never it's never that and um i just don't know what it is and then she goes into this this whole like uh rant about how because she didn't experience these things um and they happened maybe before she was born it doesn't count and i don't think that's that's how life works uh i wasn't alive for a lot of things but they still happened um i wasn't alive for the mention of the tv but guess what we have them now it didn't just go away. Um, so yeah, you not being there is not an excuse for uh, them not happening, or you do not believe it happened because it didn't happen because I wasn't there. It's just not how uh, things work. Um, and makes you mention how you come together and people forming a community. Dying is a part of that. She, she mentioned she mentioned that like dying and killing and and, and looting and stuff is a part of having community um, because apparently. Everyone who who joined Jamaat was a drug dealer, killer, prostitute, which is has been disproved so many times, sister. I hope that like someone can tell you tell you this. Um, you mentioned your father was a millionaire or so before he joined Jamaat. Um, other people in Jamaat, the Dar the Darwin Islam was already the largest black like uh, Muslim movement forming ever. They had schools and 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 um, uh, bookstores and meat stores. Um, they had money flowing into the Darwin Islam. It was, it was already a fully moving organization. All right. What happened is some members of the organization had beef with other members of the organization about where it was headed. Um, and so Mubarak came in at the right time and they used him to, I guess, start the coup. And the, the coup started and things went awry. And then eventually, you know, they, people who wanted to be soldiers, Follow Mark Line because listen, he, he's going to have you fighting overseas in a war and prove that you are a, a good shot. So this, this is this what happens, um, and the idea that like you can't lead black men because black men are stubborn and, and no, it's not true. Black men are very easy to lead, gullible, um, and we see this time and time again, um, all the time. They believe whatever is told to them, and they go from there. This is why we do not form. This is why. Uh, black men are uh, most times in the position that they are because they believe any Tom, Dick, and Harry who tells them anything at all is going to happen to them. Right. Um, maybe she's in trouble with this, but that's not how it works, all right? Black people are always looking for the great white ticket out, the savior, um, yada, 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 um, while also trying to pull each other all, always down. Right. Uh, and then <laughs> she, she mentioned about Harry Tubman being, um, being part of the government. Now, listen, uh, I've heard uh, similar claims, but it was a joke <laughs> from my brother who was, who told me that uh, who told me that Harriet was uh, um, definitely not real. She was a fictional character because what Negro you know is gonna come back and help other Negroes do anything? <laughs> so maybe she was joking. A lot of best. We're gonna go with that, All right? But um, yeah, it's just like I mean, it was again it, like. It was beneficial for us because, like, you can see that this is this is how far people have to go, um, and they don't really understand, you know, where they're at until they really see it. So hopefully, you know, if she goes back and even just listens to the things she said or just watches this video, it's like, how am I? I really said all this stuff. Like, I really, I really said that. Like, I believe everything MG has to has to say, but I don't know him at all. I did, I've met him one time. Um, my parents know him, and they follow him, and yeah, yeah. But I personally know him, but I, I follow him. Like, it doesn't. It wouldn't make sense to follow someone you don't really know. But uh, there we are. Um, she has this belief that 
um, barge line every Saturday, anything bad, right? And just like that, just proves, as we mentioned earlier, and you don't know him. Because if you knew him, then you would know that um, the things that we're saying aren't really that. I, it's not shocking because um, those are things he said. If if you actually loved him, right? If you loved him and knew him as much as you said you did, then nothing would be shocking to you. You would just just be like, hey, uh, this is what he said, and hey, I know this, and that's what it is. Because I can show you. Let's say that. Listen, let's say this. Let's say. I love my sister. Okay. Someone can come to me, um, and be like, Amina said this. And I'll be like, what? When did she say that? Huh? Because I know all the things about, about my sister. So if you truly love this man, then you know everything about him, right? You, it, you would make it your, 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 uh, your job to learn about him and the things that he has to go through and um, the things that he did. Um, but you don't because you guys have a, a reverence for him. You revere him. And part of it is you guys fear him, but you don't really know him at all. Um... He's a he's a convenient name. It's a convenient thing to say. It's like when people say Abu you said um, this, that, and the third. You don't really know what he said. You, you might have heard it from someone, or you just want to attribute a saying to him. That's what it is. But knowing him is not something um, that you guys did or ever really would do. Um, it just was convenient for you guys. A lot a lot of the the whole Yama aesthetic, the cult thing, and she was just too about how you know she wants to be like go be on the land, hold hands, sing songs. It's a, a a fun idea, right? It, it's a fun thing, you know, you, you, you can go and be a part of a community of people, right? And you guys are going to accomplish these things together <laughs> and be all hunky-dory and, 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 you know, together and kumbaya. Um, but, like, it doesn't really hold much weight um, because it, what happened w was not that, right? The Jamaat, because she mentions, and this is also something that you learn if you, if you just study history, is that the Dar of Islam already had plans to move to the rural areas and build farms and live off the lands. This is this all part of the plans that the Dar of Islam had. But Jalati came and uh, Negroes gave credit to uh, him instead of the Dar of Islam. They already had the plan in place, but it didn't, it didn't, it actually happen because Dar of Islam fell apart. But the, the, the plan was to um do that right but one of the things you're going to run into um, which we see on the land is that folks go and do these you know agricultural things farms uh animals and people understand that farming is a real skill it's a real profession so like, you're not just going to make shift yourself and just manually become a farmer so you would see in the Jamaat, people would have you know uh sheep and and, and deer uh, and the sheep and goats and, and cows and stuff and these animals would die um, freeze in the winter time because people weren't qualified to have these these animals these livestock because you guys are farmers it's, it's not like you can't just buy an animal and say hey i know how to take care of a cow now it's not how it works folks folks stay for this they pay for this they go to school for this um or they spend their whole lives on a farm and you uh, folks here aren't just gonna just randomly like hey we're gonna go get a farm and because we have slave dna we're gonna know how we're gonna know how to work on a farm again it's just it's, it's just not how it works it's not it's just not how it works um, so I think that people have this misconception and, uh, it, it carried on for a long time. Um, but that, that's just, it wasn't very likely. Um, I think Joffre mentioned this or someone asked Joffre this, um, and texted us too, like, Hey, if, if, if all things were equal, um, and you could, um, you could, uh, just, you know, live back on the land again, but like, you know, it, it would just the shirt would stop. Would you live back in the land? It's like, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I think the, the phases of me living in the country, uh, on the land, um, with no connection to anything in the world, um, it is over. Uh, being part of the large Muslim Ummah is so much more rewarding. It, it, like, it, it's more beneficial to, to me, I feel like, than that would be. So, again, like, a sister, you, you live in Philly. Um, Philly has, as with every place you go to, there is good things, there's bad things. Um, so I would say try to reconnect or connect with people in Philly who are, you know, of like-minded as you. Um, not because everywhere isn't always bad, right? It's not, everything isn't just, just all bad in Philly. It can't be the case. Um, there's plenty of good things in Philly as there's good things everywhere else in the world. 
uh, and, and we say this to everyone, you know, just go to a local masjid um, and find one that you agree with. It could be one close to you, maybe further away, but just find one you agree with and talk to them because you don't need the Jama'at to be a Muslim, obviously. Don't need Jelani for that. You're, you're still Muslim currently to this day, but you are, you know, a little misguided and confused and you just need to have um, some understanding about what actually went on. And I, I understand, like, it, it's a tough thing because my father, mother, and family, you know, we believed in this man and he was wrong. Uh, it's hard to admit to, it's hard to agree, um, it's hard to understand, but this is the case, it's reality. And everyone has to have this point where they come and realize, dang, my whole life uh, following this man was wrong. And that is okay, because we all get to that point and when we do, it's better for us. So, uh, inshallah, I hope that, that uh, you know, this video finds you and everyone else in good health. And uh, we go from there. Assalamu alaikum.